I was the driver of the second vehicle, and so and you just gotta keep driving, you know. Keep driving, just, bullets yep. fly, and you're just like. No big deal. Just, yep. Just... Oh, he just banged himself. You ever been banged? Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, I didn't even notice that he's carrying 474 rounds on him. Now 434. <laughs> so that's a lot of ammo. What's up, everybody? I'm Israel Wright. With me, as always, is Cameron Fath from the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. And we are back. We're back, baby. Folks, I was a Special Forces Green Beret out of Fort Lewis, Washington, and I deployed to Iraq in 2008. Yeah, I'm a former Army Ranger, also out of Fort Lewis, Washington, and I deployed to Syria in 2017. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Modern Warfare 2 Lead the Way mission. And Israel, did you did you ever hear that Rangers Lead the Way? You know what? I heard something about that. Why don't you do tell us about that? Why should I tell you when we can just watch? Whoa, let's go. Whoa. Ranger, U.S. Army Rangers, Love PFC me, Joseph uh, Allen. Oh yeah, they always make it to private, dude. <laughs> if you wanted to make this authentic, you need a team leader, a tab. But yeah, 175 looks like they're going. Is in that right. for exposition purposes, you know, so they get to tell the private exactly what's going on so exactly. the player knows? Well, most of the privates don't know what the hell's going on anyways. <laughs> you heard them like sheep, but they're really lethal sheep. Bridge layer. I remember that from G.I. Joe. I had the bridge layer G.I. Joe vehicle. It's so interesting seeing different MOSs work together to just collectively create this giant fighting force. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were really putting a large emphasis on modularity, making everything modular, being able to attach this unit to this unit and this unit come together, and then they do like a joint operation, you know. I saw a scar pop up there, and I carried one overseas, so. You did? Cool. Yeah. Oh, cool, man. I was right when I was getting out. The SCAR was just coming in as I was out processing, so. The SCAR is definitely an interesting weapon system. It has 308 capability, so the reason I use it, because I was a gun team leader, and that means I worked with the 240s, and that's all 7.62, so mm -hmm. I wanted something that I could reach out and touch what my guns were touching, and with the M4, that's not really that possible, because you're using 5.56. I could mark a target, especially in a desert environment when you're trying to call targets out. You can't be like, hey, you see that grain of sand right there? Mm -hmm. it would be like, hey, on my splash, and I have tracers, and I could just shoot like 900 meters and make the bullets impact, and you can see where that splash hits. I'd be like, right there. Uh, hit that thing. I do that in the store when I'm shopping. I want that thing on the shelf over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got the skeleton Humvee. We use those. Doors out. Ooh, yeah. hello. I had a dream. I was a ranger. Oh, God, it's real. <laughs> John F. Kennedy Special Warfare Training Center School, right there on his shoulder. Is that explained that he should have mm -hmm. that on his shoulder? Because we only had that, obviously, when we were training and in, in the, the Q course. Yeah. yeah. I caught that. <laughs> See, I don't I remember some things. Yeah. Rangers lead the way. That's right. Yeah, there you go. It's a General Normandy Coda move right there. Nope, you're going the wrong way. Everybody's yeah. just stacked behind this barrel. Yeah, not a lot of cover, but the vehicle yeah. would be a good idea. You got the rocks there. Vehicles, you gotta position yourself behind that engine block because that's pretty much the only part of a vehicle that can truly stop munition. That weapon is arguably even better than your squad automatic weapons in that team setting. You can't curve bullets unless you're in a really high advantage and use plunging fire on, mm -hmm. a, on a target, but the only truly way to get around dead space and deflate is with that 40 mic mic, and that's what makes it such an important tool. All right, enemy technical, let's get that Oh, AT4 up there, I like yep, it. There you go. Any enemy technical that is not safe in a ranger platoon, you are gonna get the sh blown out of you. That kind of sounds erotic. <laughs> in a different context, it might be yeah. kind of messy. Also, you wouldn't be rocking fully automatic. It's pretty much a semi-automatic world out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full auto is way too unmanageable in a far fight. You need that precision fire. You're gonna achieve that with semi-automatic. <laughs> the guy just showing us the way. Yeah. Go up the bridge. Hop on that minigun, Private. You know exactly what you're doing. Oof. Oftentimes in Iraq, when I was there, I was often the gunner up on top. I didn't have a minigun, but we had a 50 cal machine yeah. gun, so. Damn too. The only time I really got time on a minigun was overseas. We had one attached to one of our trucks. If you're a gamer, you'd know how to use this because it's literally a video game. Remote so you, control. Yeah, yeah you and that thing, you could shoot the fing off a honeybee from like 1,000 meters. <laughs> you Vietnam era <laughs> Yeah, the M134 minigun is the one we were using, and those shoot about 2,000 to 6,000 rounds per minute based off environmental consideration. And with the ammo shortage today, you're shooting a couple grand every minute. I'd be smiling. That's bougie. 
You'd be like, I'm rich! <laughs> <laughs> Make it rain! We used to have this thing called rolling rendition, where we were looking for somebody, and we would go rolling through the town in a little convoy, we'd go through these narrow streets in Mosul, Iraq, looking for somebody. We'd have our asset in there with us. He'd be covered up, because he was from the neighborhood. Yeah. We'd be like, that guy, that's him. That guy drinking tea right there, that cafe, that's him. So we'd roll by, we'd Snitch. stop, and then blah, 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 we'd yeah, roll up, us. and then we'd take and we'd roll out. Nice, dude, what a snitch. <laughs> So technically, if you're running through a convoy like this, every gun is going to be pointed a different way. So your lead vehicle is going to be pointing forward, your vehicle behind that is either left and right, and then you would flip-flop from there. If the truck in front of you is pointing left, your gun's pointing right. That way you have 360 coverage. Uh, you can't shoot those guys because they're not a threat, but you know they're bad. So yeah. You just remember their face. Just, yeah, staring them down, wearing body armor behind a flag, yeah. jihadi flag. Dude, I got your number, buddy. I'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, rip concerned. them, dude. See, that's oh. why you're pointing to the left. Yeah. Okay, rooftop. Always concerned the rooftop because I couldn't get that 50 cal up that high, so I'd be on my M4 in the city. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that if you're not on free gun, which is basically when you unhook your panel, which is what you mount the 50 on on the vehicle, you really just have lateral movement there. Yeah. And then you have slight adjustments that you can make with that panel. So, and Small. those adjustments take, because you're, you're spinning a dial on that Picatinny. So unless you go free gun, you can't really manipulate that gun. And once it's on free gun, it's a little hard to control. So you don't get as accurate fire. Oh, you just ram in it. Definitely a private's driving because he's just everywhere. When we were in Iraq, we owned the road. So anything we did was the right decision. We wanted to go to the other side of the road against oh, yeah. traffic. We wanted to throw flashbangs. We wanted to ram a car. It was always correct oh, yeah. because we never knew there was an IED in that vehicle or not, you know? Yeah. That's a bad habit I've tried to break because now I, if I see like if there's traffic, I'm like, why don't I just drive around it on the other side of the freeway? We have it's like, I can't do that anymore. You have rules in America. Да, два чувака против целого взвода. In regiment's case, where you had four squads and one of them being a weapon squad, weapon squad would pretty much take the big guns. So you would have weapon squad attached throughout those three squads. So say you're running three vehicles, your gunners are going to be on that machine gun while the fire team uh, occupies the rest of the seat. Yeah, it was sim something similar. We always had a load plan. I knew that because I was the junior guy on the team, I was always going to get either the driver or the turret, you know? Because yeah. the guys, the, the senior guys, they'd be they want to get out. Yeah, they want to get they out. They want to hang fight. out. You know, yeah, exactly. So I'd be stuck in there. I remember the only time we ever got ambushed in Mosul, I was the driver of the second vehicle. And so and you just got to keep driving, you know. Keep driving, yeah. bullets yeah. flying. You're just no like, no big deal. Just, yep. Just. Now, one thing I can say is there was a fair amount of driving training. I got to go to a, a Humvee course in Indiana for a week where we just learned all the capabilities of the Humvee at the time. That was like the main vehicle. Also, we would do our own driving training and everybody would flip and take turns as being the driver, being the gunner, being the passenger and stuff. So everybody would have some aptitude in case that plan changed in the middle of a battle or something like that. As long as you have your military driver's license, though. You need to get that. You're not driving without it. What is the military driver's license test? It's a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> This most stupid thing in the military is like, well, you need a military driver's license and it needs to qualify you to drive a vehicle and it needs to go through your master driver and that's the dumbest shit in the world. I think I remember my driving test was me getting the paper and my master driver oh, yeah. signing off on the paper. Yeah. Like, all right, get out of here. Get You're supposed to go through driver's training, which is like, go up this hill, now back up. Now make a left, now make a right. I had a private that didn't have a driver's license, but he had a military driver's license. <laughs> yeah. He's driving a war zone, just not on the streets of America. Yeah, it was, and he was 20 years old. I'm like, get your license, man. Oh, man. He's wearing bump helmets. See, that wouldn't happen, because those aren't ballistic. Yeah. Oh, what they're wearing right now? Yeah, they're just fast helmets. So, like, they're lightweight. They're pretty much made of carbon, but if you got shot in the face, it would not do anything. Mm. Yeah, Glock, man. We use Glock. Speaking of getting shot in the face, you ever wear any ballistic face masks? Nah, man. I never did. Either. The only time we'd ever wear something on our face was when we were working with Simunition, and it's like that pretty much training transition over from Miles Gear and blanks. Yes. And Miles Gear was just laser tag, so you'd be wearing this vest with indicators on them. And it never works. It never works ever. And then you had blanks, which oh, he just banged himself. You oh. don't want to bang yourself. Don't bang oh. yourself. Bang the enemy. You ever been banged? Though? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's. Wait, I didn't. You ever been flash banged? You ever been flash banged? That. Yeah, my girlfriend's gonna kill me. <laughs> you ever been banged? And then blanks. Obviously, you can't get target feedback. Everybody's just shooting mm -hmm. just because it makes a noise. But simunition was uh, an actual projectile came out of your gun. It was like a paint bullet or like an airsoft round. And uh, yeah, that. Sh 
hurt. So you definitely knew if you were doing something wrong because you would pay for it. Did he pick up an AK just now? He did. All right. Flashbang, man. Definitely flashbang every single room in this type every, of environment, yeah, dude. Yeah. Those things are such a good tool. I think I had one frag, but I had like seven flashbangs. Yeah. On my everywhere on the back, you have you carry flashbangs on your back for your buddy to use because you're always constantly changing the stack of how you maneuver through this. So it's like there's not one dedicated flashbang guide, and there's not one dedicated like one man or two man or three man because it's constantly changing. When yeah, when you train CQB, everybody trains each individual position, position. so you're ready no matter how that stack up, you're ready to go. You know, I didn't even notice that he's carrying 474 rounds on him. Now 444. <laughs> so that's a lot of ammo. A basic combat load is around 210 rounds, which is doctrine. And that's uh, seven magazines, right? Because you got 30 round mags. So this guy's carrying over 14. <laughs> They're wrapped mags. around yeah. his torso, up on the shoulder pads, on the knees, you know? Yeah, not to mention you're carrying two 40 mic mics or three 40 mic mics now. Yeah, nods during the daylight, you typically wouldn't wear your night vision on your helmet if it's daylight because unless you have covers to protect the lenses, that sunlight can Go trans them up. Yeah, yeah, inside to outside, yeah, mm -hmm. transition. Instead of walking down the middle of that, you're gonna be have two squads on each side pulling cross coverage because the guys on the left can see way more of that right side than, the, than just walking center. Not to mention, you're a machine gunner's wet dream if you're walking right down an alleyway because that's called frontal fire. And you can just literally like ducks in a row. One burst can take out like six guys. Guy Coolest, thanks for the gameplay, by the way. Yeah, man, you're doing great. Yeah, right, dude. But this General is... Shepard. Hey, Private, you're taking it's, orders from me. I'm gonna you tell you me. everything. Here, don't worry about your team leader, don't worry about your squad leader, don't worry about your platoon star, and you're, you're taking it from me, man. Talk about pulling rank. Did you ever see a general? Yeah, so when I was in the guard, I had to meet the general of the California National Guard. No deployment. <laughs> okay. We had the USASOC uh, general come down when we were overseas. He was a cool guy. Bam. Gameology answered my prayers. <laughs> I love ranger missions. Doesn't matter if it's a <laughs> like portrayal of rangers. I love rangers. As long as they got that scroll there. Yeah, man. the scroll, yeah. man. That's awesome. Folks, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page. If you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go to twitch.tv slash myhappyself. And if you guys want to support a brand with a great cause, go check out kickoutapparel.com. It's my personal brand. We're doing a lot of community support efforts in the Los Angeles area, and I would really love your support. Right on, team. We'll see you next time. It's very interesting, and you think you're in a combat zone. Everyone else is in full kit, and you just got General Shepard here rocking a black yeah. guy. You want to talk about inaccuracy, dude. <laughs> Get back to the talk, man. You have no business being out. Some boys born to wave the flag. Who do you think we find blue?